Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, we're in Super Rare Micro's C9Z390-PGW BIOS. We got in here by pressing delete. Uh, when we see our keyboard lights light up or our little onboard speaker uh, make a little chirp, and um, you just press delete, and you're going to come to this menu. This is their easy mode. Um, it's pretty easy. It's a new design. You got your boot priorities here. You got your fan control here, and a bunch of other stuff there. We're going to press F7 and go to the advanced mode. We can go over advanced here, and then we have selected advanced mode as our default before. I just want to show you what you're going to land at. So you can just come to this advanced panel right here, go to the setup mode at the top, and go to advanced, so you just default to advanced. Then your save and exit menu is where you find your boot disks. And we're going to focus on overclocking, CPU overclocking first. Now, I like to go ahead and set CPU OC setting to 5 gigahertz, okay? Um, because that way it loads a bunch of uh, backside settings um, in the back end that unlock power restrictions and set up optimal voltage regulator numbers. Now this motherboard recently took the record for liquid nitrogen 9900K overclocking and um, they did so with a six phase VRM. That's how high quality the phases are. Um, so They've actually optimized the power settings. I've gone in there and tinkered, and I can't really do too much better than this. These are enough. Um, then we go to CPU features over here, and we see they also disable C states by default when you enable that mode. So it does a bunch of things behind the scenes for you. It does a little bit more too. These CPU VR settings here, uh, AC, D side, DC, internal, VR, uh, these are zero by default. But when we set our settings, it came to this. Okay? And it did change some of these slopes too. So it does a bunch of things behind the scenes. Now our ring. So we're going to set this to 4.7 gigahertz. By default, it's 4.3. And Supermicro does not take this up. Um, but we're going to set this to 47 because that's where we're comfortable with. We know our CPU can do this. You might want to start it with just setting your CPU frequency and then go back into your ring and increase it. The ring is basically the cache frequency, so it makes somewhat of a difference. You don't need to disable a speed step or any of that stuff. Um, and you don't really need to touch anything else here. Now this AVX ratio offset, this will downclock the CPU by number. So right now I, I want to do 50 gig, uh, 5 gigahertz all core overclock. Now let's say I run to programs that use AVX. AVX uses a lot of power and dedicated units within the CPU. And these units use a lot more power and heat and they can cause instability. So sometimes a lot of people might want to use their computer to like render a video with handbrake. Doing that engages AVX units within the CPU and they might not be stable at 5.2 gigahertz like that but they might be stable playing games at 5.2 gigahertz because it's not using these dedicated extra units within the core so basically that's why this ratio offset exists so if I set this to 2 then my CPU would downclock to 4.8 gigahertz if I had this at 5.2 gigahertz set up here all core and then set that to 2 it would go to 5 gigahertz for AVX and everything non AVX would be 4.8 we're not going to touch that we also have a TJ Maxx offset now this is to increase the throttle point. Intel actually allows people to increase it like 15 degrees up to 115 degrees, um, which is pretty weird. They, it's, I mean, if you read the last sentence in the description, it says only works on coffee like S8 <laughs> plus 2 SKU, which is the 9900K. Um, but yeah, so here are your power limits. You don't need to touch those. Um, I, I think they're just overridden anyway. So now we're going to go to memory. And we're just going to set XMP. Now, the cool little trick I like about Supermicro motherboards is that if I set XMP, yeah, it sets all my timings for me and all that, it's all grayed out. But if I then set uh, custom, it doesn't set all these back to default. It leaves my XMP timings in there. So if you think you want to tinker with all of these timings, you can. And this is what the manufacturer recommends for the recommended speed of the memory at that frequency. So you have a good starting point, something you really don't have on many other motherboards. I'm not sure why others don't do this, but I like the fact that they do that. We're just going to set XMP. Then we're going to go voltage configuration. We don't like that 1.4 volts. Uh, we don't like this 1.3 volts. Uh, that's all way too high. So we're going to go here, and uh, we're going to reduce this to 1. This is by default 1.15, I think. We're going to go uh, 1.2. And see, I'm typing in 1200 because it's a... Um, It's, it's in millivolts, and there's no decimal point. Core voltage override, 1.3 is too high. I believe sometimes it sets 1.450. That's way high. We're like 1.275 on this, and we're going to go with override here. If you want your CPU frequency to drop, 
um, when you're overclocking. I'll show you how to do that. Then you're going to want to set this to adaptive. And then your it, name changes from core voltage override to core extra turbo voltage. I don't know why they added extra in there, but if you wanted that, what you would do here is you do 1275. We found on this motherboard that it seems to overvolt by 30 millivolts. So we'd set this to negative and we go 30 in here. And then with the same LLC level, okay, um, level 2, we would get roughly 1.2 volts under load. If we set this to zero, no offset, we get like 1.3 volts. Um, it has to do with some of the backside stuff Supermicro has done. We see similar on some other boards. So that's what we would do, but we like override for the stability. We always run on 5 gigahertz. But if you want to type power, um, then what you would do is you would go in a window, set your perform your power plan to high perform, I mean to balance, and then that would allow the CPU frequency to jump up and down to 5 gigahertz and like 3.6 or even lower or whatever. And that's when you use an adaptive. If you always want to run 5 gigahertz, you want it really stable. Um, then you would do override one two seven five. The difference in power isn't too big. Um, so these voltages I'm going over right now are not changed by Supermicro's uh, profile. This one is. This one by default is 0.95 volts. We're gonna do uh, one five. It's gonna go to like one four eight because eleven four eight because I guess that's not an option you can choose. Low line calibration. Let's talk about this for a second. Level one is the strongest. It's gonna actually reverse droop and actually increase voltage under load. You don't really want that. Level 2 is going to allow for a slight droop, like a few millivolts. Level 3, more of a drop. Level 4, more of a drop. And level 5, the most drop. So level 5 is not the strongest. Level 1 is the strongest. Level 2, we found to be good. This is an internal voltage. And um, so, are, so are these PLL trim controls. You don't need to mess with those. This is more like liquid nitrogen overclocking. You only need to mess with system agent voltage, core voltage, uh, core voltage mode, LLC, and uh, CPU I.O. voltage. So, we've basically done everything we need to do, right? So we're just going to uh, F10 and save and exit setup. And um, the first time you're going to boot with this motherboard, once you set an overclocking setting and you change like a big overclocking setting, it's going to reboot quickly twice. Um, and then, um, so it's doing it now because I did make some changes and then it's going to uh, boot up normally after that quickly what it's doing is memory training um, it's going back and forth and checking the memory whenever you change the CPU voltage mode from adaptive to override override to adaptive it's also going to do this we haven't seen it with smaller changes like if we change our CPU frequency or a voltage it's not going to require that like twice reboot but it's, it's consistent behavior we've seen from this motherboard not a big deal but l this board boots pretty fast um, at least after it's done posting. The nice drive doesn't help either. It doesn't hurt either. <laughs> so here we have our um, CPU-Z. We want to go check the frequency, right? 5 gigahertz all time, 1.248 volts or whatever. Um, and then if we go here and we go to control panel, and I was going to show you what I was talking about with adaptive. If we go to control panel here, and we go to power options and we go balanced then we see our CPU frequency dropped right and in that case you would probably want to use adaptive voltage as well uh, so your CPU frequency could uh, change with it so we have this 5 gigahertz OC here and then we can pop up a quick uh, benchmark like handbrake here and we can also engage uh, maybe HW info why not HW info is excellent for finding everything you need uh, for like voltages, well, in this case, it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't give a good voltage reading on this motherboard. CPU Z I found to be more accurate, uh, closer to real, than uh, HW info. But HW info is always good for HW info is always good for seeing things like so here. You see. You can keep track of maximum and minimum processor frequencies, maximum and minimum voltages, but here I don't think these are the real readouts. Um, your ring bus, 4.7 gigahertz, you see that there. Your core temperatures here, you see it's running pretty cool even with full volts. Um, and then distance to TJ Maxx, that's how close you are to throttle point. And then you can also find some interesting things depending on how it's um, integrated or the controller used for the voltage regulators. Uh, so you got the motherboard's own sensors right here. 
and you got a bunch of cool stuff like that. So let's just start encoding. Yes, I wish to overwrite it. And you see our voltage went to right about what we set, 1.272. So that's pretty neat. Uh, that's a good level for LLC for us. And uh, see, our temperatures are reasonable. They're not going over 80. They're not going over 70. Our CPU is being fed. And the voltage did just jump up a little bit again. So it depends on when the AVX units are used within the CPU. But our temperatures are really what we want to look for. And we shouldn't really go over 80 with this motherboard at this voltage. Um, but yeah, our, our average frames per second is what we use here. And this is how we compare uh, whether the motherboard's throttling. Um, a CPU down power wise or something like that. We can use it as a performance indicator. Plus, this is using AVX. We find that most motherboards, most Z390 high performance motherboards, give us roughly 90 frames per second uh, when overclocked to 5 gigahertz. Um, and so it's doing it. And this will freeze the CPU if uh, things aren't looking good. So. You know, this is giving us some weird readings, so it's not too bad. It's a mixed usage. It's more of a real-world benchmark than something else. Um, and so, yeah, what I was explaining was if you want this voltage to drop a lot more, then just set a set adaptive, and it'll drop at the CPU frequency. But you need to set your Windows performance plan to balanced. If you set it to high performance, even with adaptive voltage, it's not going to drop the frequency. We already tested it. Um, but the balanced performance plan is not bad. I mean, if you want to save power, you might as well do it the right way, right? Yeah, so we're almost done here. And your average FPS is just around what we predicted, 90. So this is what we use for quick benchmarks. You definitely want to use Prime 95 with AVX uh, for, like, real hardcore benching. Um, but, yeah, we know this CPU is stable, and it requires 1.275 on the highest end boards we've used. So, and we see the same temperatures. So we're done. We see these same temperatures we're hovering around 80 um, when we use those boards. So this board is performing just like they do, which is exactly what we want to see. Uh, so there's nothing wrong here. And if we go down here, we can see our average FPS in case you missed it. It's right around 90. So it's in that log. Um, Handbrake is a quick, dirty little test. It depends how long your video is. And this is a real 4K video, and we really do encode it. And we really do use Handbrake. There's also the Blender benchmark that just came out. Oh, there is one more thing I want to show you. Supermicro does have a program. Now, before we open it, we want to shut down all the other monitoring programs just to avoid any conflicts. Even having like CPU-Z and HW info together, if they're pulling the same hardware thing, well, it might cause issues. Um, and you'll see HW info on other boards, not this one, but from other vendors that have like certain things. They like tell you you need to close the other vendor's software, or do you want us to not? Uh, monitor these things because it's going to cause a conflict with your motherboard software. So I just like to open this alone. Here we have our voltage reset, we have our ratios here, and it's a real-time change. Um, voltage settings here, so our LLC level, our voltage, our thermal. This is our fan, so you do have a GUI within uh, the thing. BIOS update. No, I don't want to do that. And if you hit no, then you can pick your file. Um, luminous are your RGB settings. And then we have um, memory. So you can set XMP here and then apply, but of course you're going to need a restart. And yeah, so you even have ice here, but you don't want to mess with that. You can go ahead and enable fast boot if you really wanted to, but you have everything here you need. And um, yeah. So if I want to change all these ratios at the same time up, I hit the lowest one. If I want to change one down, then I hit the top one. But if I hit the top one up, it's not going to change them all at the same time. So that's how you change them all at the same time. Let's see if we go up 5.1 gigahertz, if it'll do it in real time, it should. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it was stable, and it went up. So that's like if you want to do real-time overclocking, let's say you don't want to restart, maybe you want to bump your voltage up a little bit, whatever, that's what you can use this program for. Um, so yeah. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know. But we do suggest that if you do overclocking for a system you want stable, run Prime 95 with AVX, the latest one. But if you run it with AVX, don't use an offset. And if you do use offset, go get the version of Prime 95 that was out a while ago that didn't have the AVX 
feature integrated into it. Because if you only test with the AVX offset, then you're not going to test like performance in non-AVX or stability in non-AVX programs. So you can use either both versions of Prime 95 or just the Prime 95 with AVX as long as you don't use an offset. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and we have a written article too, so visit us and uh, we'll deliver. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them.